Namo Namaha and welcome back. In the last segment, we were looking at our fifth class, right? Uh, the Sugarna. Now it's time to turn to a very, very closely related class within our non aganas, which is class eight, the Dun Gana. Uh, this Gana is named after the characteristic root Dun, which means to extend or stretch, basically. Uh, and it gets conjugated in the strong form as the noti. He stretches, she stretches, it stretches. Uh, in the weak form, we find, for example, in the Atmanepada, tanute, which means the same thing. She stretches, he stretches, it stretches. There's actually very few verbs in class eight, uh, but one, one of them that we do find is actually a very important verb, which is gru, to do or to make. Maybe it's the most important verb of them all in some ways. Um, and of course, just to make our lives a little bit more challenging, kru is going to have some irregularities. Anyway, let's jump right into how we form the stem from the root in the dan gana. This works almost the same way as the fifth class. You're going to, again, not do anything to the root, but strong and weak alternation gets determined by adding two different kinds of gana markers to that root. So for the strong stem, we add o to the root. Uh, and for the weak stem, we add short u to the root. And that's it. Uh, when we add our endings, parasmaipada, atmanepada, we'll encounter a little bit of sandhi here and there, but for the most part, it's a fairly straightforward situation. Um, so let's look at tan. What do we do? We take the root tan, we add o to get our strong stem, tan o. We add u to get our weak stem, tan u. Uh, and then we add our endings. So in the strong form, we're going to have tanoti. He stretches, she stretches, it stretches. Tanutaha will use the weak form. The two of them stretch. And tanuanti, they three or more stretch. Notice here, our u in tanu is going to turn into a wakara because of internal sandhi, tanuanti. For a second person, again, we're going to get the internal s sandhi rule that gets triggered by our o gara. So, if we, so we'll get tanoshi, you stretch. Tanu ta, the two of you stretch. And tanu ta, you three or more stretch. Finally, for the first person, the uttama purusha, we'll have tanomi, I stretch, using our strong stem tano. Right? The others, we're going to use the weak stem tanu. Tanu waha, the two of us are stretching. Or tanu maha, the three or more of us are stretching. Here we'll, we'll find a little wrinkle is that optionally we can also see tan waha or tan maha. The ukara can drop out uh, in our uttama purusha duals and, and plurals, the, the dvivachana and bahuvachana. We saw this, if you remember, in the fifth class as well. Uh, so that's the, our root tan. Uh, now, this is basically actually more or less the only eighth class verb that we'll be encountering at this stage in our lives, aside from one other one, which is very common and very important and somewhat irregular. And this is kru, which means to do or to make. Here, our root is going to undergo a change before we add our o or u gana markers uh, to form our strong or weak stem. In forming a strong stem, first kru is gunated to kar, and then you add your o, so you get karo as your strong stem. In the weak situation, uh, first kr changes to kur uh, with a consonant r, and then you add your gana marker u to get guru. So karo, guru. Uh, for the strong forms, we'll have karo ti, he, she, it, does, or makes. Tuam karo shi, you do or make. S sandhi is in effect, right? Uh, finally, aham karo mi, I do or make. In the weak forms, we'll use kuru now, and we'll get kuru taha, the two of them do or make. In the plural, we'll have kuruanti, they three or more do or make. Uh, for second person dual, kuru taha, the two of you do. For plural, kuru ta, you plural do or make. In the uttama purusha duals and plurals, we're gonna see. That, like that optional rule for tan, we're going to see the u fall out, and this is here compulsory. So we get kurvaha, we to do or make, and kurmaha, we three or more make or do. 
Guru is often also found in the Atmanepada, and it's worth a closer look to get our more Atmanepada practice. Again, with all of these non-Aganas, the Atmanepada is going to take the weak stem only, right? Guru. Gurute. She does, he does, it does. Guruvat, guruvate, the two of them do or make. Guruvate, they three or more do or make. Second person, we're going to have Gurushe, you do. Guruvate, you two do. And Gurudwe, you three or more do or make. In the first person, the Uttama Purusha, we'll have Guruve, I do or make. Guruvahe, we two do. And Gurmahe, we three or more. So these forms are not terribly tricky, actually, uh, and we do have to do some sandhi here and there. But for the most part, gru is a verb, of course, you're going to see a lot and in a lot of different forms. You're going to get to know it and love it and recognize it all the time as you move forward in your Sanskrit education. So let's pause here for a moment. When we come back, we'll take on one of the final, easier non-aganas. And this is the ninth class known as the kri. Watching. See you next time. Unarmi lamaha. <laughs>